Uh, so today um, we talk about oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone. Um, in the body, it is produced in the hypothalamus. It's produced in the paraventricular nucleus and in the supraoptic uh, nucleus. Then this uh, hormone produced in those uh, nuclei in the hypothalamus move through the neurons um, and portosystems into the posterior pituitary where it is stored. We know that in the posterior pituitary there are two hormones there. There's vasopressin stored there and of course there's oxytocin as well. Uh, these hormones are very similar to each other. They only differ on just two amino acids. So if oxytocin is given at a very high dose, its vasopressin effects um, would normally uh, kick in. Uh, so that's, that's about these two hormones. So what does oxytocin do physiologically? So number one, it causes contraction of the uterus, the smooth muscle cells of the uterus contract um, and of course if we're talking about pregnancy um, the higher the gestation age the more the receptors for oxytocin the higher the response to to the hormone um, the second thing that oxytocin does is that um, it causes contraction of myoepithelial cells In breast um, ducts and this um, this leads to ejection of milk uh, the third thing that oxytocin does is it makes the mother love love her baby so it's a hormone of love so that's why we advise women to breastfeed early this leads to production of more oxytocin and improves the bonding uh, between the um, mother and the baby uh, then lastly uh, oxytocin uh, causes um, contraction of the vas deference in men uh, in the process of ejaculation so that's what oxytocin does. In our labor ward, this is indications now, we use oxytocin for various um, indications. So we use it for induction of labor. Um, we use it for augmentation of labor. We use it for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. We use it for postpartum hemorrhage prophylaxis. This happens when you're anticipating postpartum hemorrhage, for instance, in a high parity mother. Or when you are using it for Amstel that's active management of the third stage of labor. We use it for uh, preventing postpartum memorage. The other uh, indication for oxytocin is um, in evacuation of molar pregnancies. When you're evacuating molar pregnancies, there's a high risk of bleeding as the molar tissue is removed. So we use it to help the uterus to contract and therefore reduce on bleeding. Then we use it in abortions. Uh, 
uh, inevitable abortions, for instance. And sometimes even when it's not really advised, because there are no receptors in the first trimester, we use it for incomplete abortion when we evacuate uh, early pregnancy um, abortions. So we do an evacuation and at the end we give uh, oxytocin. So what about dosing? Uh, so for active management of the third stage of labor, which is uh, the commonest use, we normally would give uh, 10 international units, IM, in the muscle, usually on the thigh. You can also give um, it intravenously. But when you give it intravenously, it's advisable that you give five international units, IV, as opposed to 10, and you give it slowly. When you give it too fast, you end up causing hypotension. Um, for augmentation of labor and induction of labor, generally it's advised that you start very low, uh, maybe 2.5 um, milli international units, per minute and you can go up to 20 um, milli international units per minute the idea is that you have to start low and you keep doubling the dose until you are happy with the contractions usually depending on the stage of labor you'll be happy with um, three moderate contractions every uh, 10 minutes. So once you're happy with the contractions, you maintain the oxytocin infusion at that rate uh, at which you are happy with the contractions. Then um, for postpartum hemorrhage, uh, normally would go somewhere in between 20 milli international units per minute up to even 60 milli international units per minute. You give uh, until you have a contraction that uh, stops the bleeding. Um, for molar pregnancies, I think you would give it in the doses like in a postpartum hemorrhage situation. For, uh, for abortions, you give it like you are giving it for active management um, of the third stage of labor. So what are the, um, we'll call them side effects or um, like bad things that can happen um, when you're giving oxytocin. So the first thing that can happen is you can have hyperstimulation. Of the uterus, you can have fetal distress, usually because of hyperstimulation. You can have a ruptured uterus, which is something that we commonly see in our labor ward. So you can also have hypotension especially if you give it IV and you give it fast you can end up with hypotension um, the other thing you can end up with which we've already talked about is um, water intoxication and I've seen a patient die from water intoxication as a result of oxytocin so if you give oxytocin at high doses, that's above 40 milli units per minute, and you're giving IV fluids at a fast rate, um, at above 40 milli units per minute, the antidiuretic effect of oxytocin kicks in. So if you're giving IV fluids, and if you make a mistake of even giving fluids like dextrose, uh, you end up with a uh, patient retaining all this fluid um, and then they have brain edema and then they can die. 
So those are some of the side effects um, that you can experience with oxytocin. So what do you do when you have hyperstimulation of the uterus as a result of oxytocin? Hyperstimulation means that your contractions are either more than five, five or more in 10 minutes, or you have uh, contractions that are lasting more than 60 seconds. And usually this is associated with fetal distress. So what do you do in this case? So what you need to do is just one, stop the oxytocin. In this case, if you are sure that the cause of the fetal distress is the oxytocin, the next thing you can do is just wait and monitor fetal heart. You can put a patient on CTG, which we normally don't have, or you can just use a normal peanut. Uh, monitor fetal heart every five minutes uh, for about 30 minutes. If the fetal heart comes back to normal, uh, what you need to do is um, just reduce the dose uh, to half what you're giving. To half the dose that might have caused the fetal distress. So if you are giving 10 milliunits per minute, when you had fetal distress, just reduce this dose to five. Since the fetal heart rate has gone back to normal, everything is okay, the mother is okay, you just go to half the dose and continue with the augmentation of the induction. If in that time, the fetal heart does not go back to normal, then you just um, take the patient for C-section for fetal distress. And that's what uh, most people would actually do if they find uh, fetal distress with oxytocin. But if you are sure that the cause is um, the oxytocin, you can just stop it. Uh, oxytocin has a short half-life. In the next 30 minutes or so, um, uh, most of it would have been uh, metabolized and you can restart your induction or your augmentation depending on why you are doing the augmentation and the induction you can just restart and um, continue but if you have a fetal distress and um, you can't restart you just um, take a patient for c-section so that was um, about oxytocin we'll talk about uh, oxytocin dilution the way we do it um, on our labor ward because we don't have uh, infusion pumps in our setups so how do we dilute oxytocin so that we can give it at a safe um, dose for the mother that's what we'll talk about next time thank you